Well, this might look like just a giant pile of silly putty. It's not. It's actually homemade gack using glue and water and um, a little bit of borax. Believe it or not, this gack gooey material can be used to learn something about the science of glaciers. I'm Steve Spangler, and I'm all about making science fun. For the last 20 years, I've been teaching ways to turn ordinary science experiments into unforgettable learning experiences. I have an amazing team who will do whatever it takes to affect the way people think about science. And to do that, I live by one motto. Make it big, do it right, give it class. So how do you make this stuff? It's very, very simple, but uh, there's a change to the normal recipe that you may have found online. And so these are the materials you're gonna need. A little bit of glue, okay, a lot of glue, some water, and some mule team borax. Uh, a box of this will last you a life, but this is the secret to making all the slimes and gacks and ooze and all those other things. It's the cross-linker. We'll talk about the chemistry here in just a second. First, the glue. I would suggest using Elmer's glue. Don't use school glue or anything else. Elmer's glue is actually polyvinyl acetate, and polyvinyl acetate has the same behavior as polyvinyl alcohol, uh, which is the main ingredient for slime. So that's why it works so well. If you think of this, it's just like spaghetti. You know, you cook spaghetti and in the pot, those noodles move around. The pasta moves back and forth. Even when you drain the water, it still slips and slides all over each other. That's exactly what glue is like. Once glue dehydrates though, and all the water's gone, those molecules now stick into place wherever they were. And so that's how glue works. What we want to do is to keep all the moisture. In fact, we want to add some moisture and hook the molecules together at the same time. All right, I'm adding water. It's hard to tell you exactly how much. You just want this really, really soupy mess in here. And there's no substitute to getting your fingers in there and feeling it. It uh, is going to feel very, very runny. And you know that that's the perfect consistency. It's still thick and viscous, but not nearly as thick as it was. This is pretty good. There's no going back and adding more water later on. So you're gonna to wanna to experiment with a small batch before you make a large one to know exactly how it should feel. Technically speaking, borax is sodium tetraborate. It's the perfect cross-linker that we need to hook those molecules together. It's very simple to make a solution with water. You just need to make a saturated solution. So a saturated solution is a solution when you stir it up and let it sit for a second that there's still a small amount remaining on the very bottom. It's when that last teaspoon doesn't dissolve, that's a saturated solution. That's a perfect borax solution to hook our molecules together. It's when I pour in the borax solution like this that you start to see the stringiness. Again, there's no substitute for getting in there and really mixing it around. You may have to make up some more borax solution. Again, it's totally by feel. Every batch is a little bit different. While you can use a standard recipe, it's best to just use your hand and make it by touch. I can tell that it's starting to, uh, to work out, but we need definitely a little bit more water, a little bit more borax to hook this last little piece together. We want this gooey, slimy consistency but we don't want it sticking to the sides. All right, this is just about the perfect consistency. This is what you want, for one piece of it anyway. So you can see the movement of this because it is this great material. Make the same batch again, but this time add some food coloring to it. Uh, I like to make it blue. This is a non-Newtonian fluid, meaning that it doesn't obey the laws that Newton, Isaac Newton set out to describe something that goes from a liquid to a solid, or from a solid to a liquid. You can see that this flowing liquid here actually has solid-like properties when you add pressure to it. Watch. See how it breaks off? It literally shears off an edge, very similar to what a glacier does when that pressure is there. And you have literally a liquid, uh, the constant movement shearing off into a solid, yet if you allow it to work its way back together again, it becomes and flows just like a liquid. It's perfect to explain the properties of a glacier. Now you can see why we want a different color, blue and the white. 
is perfect because now we can see kind of the, the movement. If you're actually in Alaska and you could see the ice, you would see blue ice. It's just this water that has this tremendous amount of pressure on it. And uh, as those molecules get packed together, it's literally more dense than regular water. And the light refracts through there differently than it normally would through, um, through just regular water that we would, uh, we would normally see in a glass. So uh, let me fold this in. Oh, this is great. Good. And now as we break this, the shear factor, you start to get to see these layers that are inside that look fantastic. Let's allow it to flow like a real glacier. Perfect, notice how it's already starting to flow. The weight of this is now causing it to move down and it moves ever so slowly. That's why this is so good when we're teaching kids about a glacier. You can actually talk about uh, the glacier receding or the glacier advancing. And in this particular case, you can see how the weight of the gag here is pushing this part of it down. Take a look here along the edge. If you were in Alaska, the naturalist would tell you that that shoreline over the years actually was picked up by the glacier and you get this glacial silt that's moving its way in and you can see it actually come into the glacier. Well, as cool as this is, nothing compares to standing in front of a glacier and actually seeing a piece of the ice calve off and to hear that crunching sound of the ice. Well, we created an experience called Science at Sea. We partnered up with our friends at Holland America, and the whole goal was to take 100 science enthusiasts, people like you, on a week-long expedition and to go places that other normal people couldn't go with some of the best naturalists in the world. Well, that's what we did with Science at Sea in Glacier Bay. Take a look at this. We're looking at one of the most exciting things here in Glacier Bay National Park, which is a humpback whale breaching completely out of the water, a 40-ton animal throwing in most of its body completely out of the water. We've had a group of probably 35 to 50 people up here all morning since 8.30. It's now about 11.30, in the rain, watching whales. It's been a pretty exciting morning out here on our way into Glacier Bay. We're just getting started. 